Welcome and greetings again, Mountaintop family and friends. So happy to be with you again on another Wednesday night. We've been having some exciting times. We thank you for allowing us to do ministry. This is our Wednesday night. This is when we come and bring you the word. But in the past couple of uh, weeks, we've had the wonderful time of the prayer. Hope you enjoyed that community pastor's prayer that we had experienced to had experienced to be able to work with other pastors and pray for our city and pray for our nations as well as this past week, Wednesday, we had the worship live. We thank Minister Joe Piggy and his staff for what they brought, that wonderful atmosphere of worship. Yes, we got your concerns. Many of you wanted more music and more worship. We're gonna bring that back to you. We're trying to operate within this system the best way we know how. Many of it, we're, working, we're making it up as we go. Thank God for a great staff, a great team that's around us, our social media team, our productions, to help us get the message out to you. So we're excited tonight. You that have been following us, we've been, we went off of the, the peace of God and the God of peace. We're gonna bring you something in that same vein tonight, but gonna to stretch it out a little bit more. We are in a very unprecedented time. The world is changing. Our governor is still trying to decide when we're gonna open back up so you that would like to come back to church can come back to church. And we're looking forward to seeing you, Dr. House and I miss your physical presence greatly, but we thank you for just praying for us and praying uh, with us and your giving and your support. We're so grateful for that liberal hearts as well. Some of you are hurting, some of you are going through some difficult times. So tonight I wanna pray before I get started into the lesson and just pray with me just for a moment as we before we move right into this lesson. Father, we bless you now. We thank you for those that are tuning in tonight and have come to hear this lesson and tune into this word. I pray that it flows through this vessel of clay, life to your people. Pray that you strengthen us, heal, save, and deliver. Give us, O oh God, directions, order our steps. We pray, O oh God, that those that are hurting, that you would be the God of comfort and strengthen them right now in the name of Jesus. Amen, and amen, and amen. Well, listen, let's go into the Bible tonight. I want to take you over the book of 1 John. 1 John, the fourth chapter. There's a familiar scripture over there in the fourth chapter of 1 John, verse 5, particularly. Go to verse 5. Now, you that follow me know that we're going to start slow. We might get excited, but let's see what the Lord says tonight so we can give you this information. In 1 John, the fourth chapter, in verse 4. And uh, the Bible says, I want to read it from the um, New King James Version. It says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Um, let me read it in another translation. It might get brighter. In the NIV, he says, you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one that is in the world. Our lesson tonight, tonight, and it may, I may not get all this done tonight, but I'm gonna start with it and see where we land at. But our lesson tonight is there is greatness in you. Put your hand on yourself and just begin to decree that word over your life tonight. There is greatness in me or there is greatness in you. That's our lesson. Let's ease into it. Now, this fourth chapter with John, in the fourth, first John, the fourth chapter and, verse, and, and verses one down to four, John is writing to uh, the believers about the true spirit. And that's what he's leading to this fourth verse about. He's talking about the spirit of error versus the spirit uh, of, of, of the true spirit of Christ. Uh, he says, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. Notice spirits, if you're a studier of the word, it is not a capital S, it's a lowercase. So it speaks of a different type of spirit, not the spirit of Christ. Gonna get to that. But it speaks of the spirit of the Antichrist, of the spirit of man. He says, whereby you are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So that's what he's talking about. And uh, let me make sure I get this lesson out of right tonight, because we're all streaming it on social media. And I'm not bashing of being the preacher to sin. I'm the only one that's got a message. Oh, no, we all got a part. But in this, there are a lot of of those who are trying their best to just get an audience. So there are many true prophets and many true teachers, and there are a lot of false teachers that are going out there in the world. This is in John's day. He says, you have to be careful then of the message that you're receiving and make sure that message is from God and not just from human flesh. False prophets, the spirits of darkness. He says, you have to test those spirits and see if those spirits are of God. 
uh, testing or proving those spirits, not the Holy Spirit, but testing the spirit of error to see that if it is the spirit of God. So John goes on and he says, the message is this. Is this message truly from the Lord? Someone's speaking, they're talking, they're trying to teach you something. Is the message truly from the Lord? He says, uh, uh, then he talks about, does the word match what God is saying? If you're saying something, can the word bag it up? Can you find it in the Bible? And he goes on in that same context of trying, testing that spirit. He says, what is the commitment or the person's commitment to the body of Christ? Are they really in tune with the body of Christ? Um, look in the same book, 1 John, look in the second chapter, look in verse 19. He says, they went out from us because they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out they went out that they might be manifested, manifested, I'm sorry, that they that none of them were of us. People that are breaking away, doing their own thing, self-independence, be careful of that. Uh, there's a, something on Netflix right now called Waco. And back in, when we was younger, it was a guy that was, that was running Waco, Pentecostal guy. Then before that time, it was Satan in Jonestown. There was a whole lot of guys went over to another, people went over to an island following the name, a guy who said he was the follower of Christ. Well, if the Bible does not bag it up, and watch this, if it's not, if you get that check in your spirit, you better move away from it. Because God gives you wisdom to know the spirit of truth to the spirit of error. Okay, he says, what is the lifestyle of the person that's talking to you? What is the fruit of their ministry? I want you to know that a ministry that has a lifestyle, a conversation, or a matter of life should also have fruit. And that fruit should be bearing and that fruit should be remaining. Paul says, and I say to you, mountaintop, family and friends, you are the fruit of my labor. Your life is a testament that the word that's been preached has bringing about greatness in you. That you are not just an average Sunday school, just getting started Christian. Some may be babes, but most of you are mature in Christ. He goes on with the spirit of error. And he talks in 1 John, the third chapter, verse 23 to 24. He says, and this is the, his commandment, that ye should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he has commanded us. Here is God's commandments. Here is his order, his charge, his precepts and injunctions that we are to love each other and believe on the name of the son of God, which is Jesus Christ. Loving one another, following his commandments, his precepts. Here is what leads to the greatness that's in you and I. <clears throat> the spirit of error versus the spirit of truth is what he gives us in the last verse of First John, the third chapter, and verse 24. He says, now he who, can, can, he who keeps his commandments, he says, abides in him, and he in him, he in him, and you in him. He who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. That goes over to St. John, the 15th chapter, verse 7. It talks about abiding in the Lord, dwelling in him. He says, going further in that same scripture, he says, And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. Stay with me. I'm laying a little foundation. Might be a little teachy, but you're going to get this rich stuff. There's greatness in me. How do I know that? I know it because of the Spirit that abides in me. This is not catch the Holy Ghost on Sunday. This is not when you feel like it, I can go back into this and feel spiritual and carnal. No, you want the indwelling, abiding Holy Spirit in your life. And he says, this is it. In 1 John, again, he says there in that context that we know that he abides in us. In 1 John 3rd chapter, verse 24, he says this again, for he, for he who keeps his commandments, orders, injunctions, abides in him and he in him. It's Christ in us. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. It's the Holy Spirit that one needs in this turbulent times to know there's greatness in you. A spirit that's not dead, but a spirit that is alive and operating. Okay, he talks on further in Romans 8 and 9. Go there quickly and find it. Romans 8 and 9. Romans 8 and 9. And as you're looking for it, let me paraphrase, Paul makes it in this uh, unmistakable clear for us, the, unmistakably clear for us, 
The Spirit of God lives in every believer. He's saying that in Romans 8 and 9. I read it from the New King James. He says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Now, don't get mad at house. This is what the Bible says. You need the Spirit to say that I have greatness dwelling inside of me. Well, I'm not saying, you, I'm not saying who's saved and who's not saved. I'm reading the Bible. If that thing dwells in you, the Holy Spirit, then you have Christ abiding inside of you. you you're following, you're catching up with me now. If Christ is dwelling in me, then I'm not one that's easily to get caught up in error or get easily swayed by an unfamiliar voice. Because I have a voice inside of me of the Holy Spirit that I know the voice of God. He goes on and tells us further. Now we know not we know the Spirit of God. Back in First John and in that in the fourth chapter, we know the Spirit of God versus the Spirit of error. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. That's the spirit that we're looking for. In Saint in First John the fourth chapter, if the spirit the person that's confessing that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, that's the Spirit of God. He is Christ in us. He's come in the flesh. Um, I want to get out of this and get to the lesson. I really do. But but look at Matthew, write this down, 8 and 28 and 29. Because he's saying to us that if a person is confessing in 1 John 4 and 2, if a person is confessing, you know, lip service, that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, this person is of God. Uh, but careful, because there are many spirits that's confessing Jesus Christ. It's more than just confessing, it is also embracing with relationship. In Matthew 8 and 28, 29, the demons were confessing that Jesus Christ had come. They says, who art thou? Have you come to torment us before our time? He says, these demons begin to cry out, what have I to do with you, Jesus, thou son of God? James 2 and 19 says it like this, you believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and they tremble. They may believe this, James says, and Matthew is saying, but they're still demons. There have been no transformation in their life. There is something in them, but it's not the greatness of God that's inside of you and inside of me. So confessing the Lord means more than just lip service. It means I, he owns me. He's my Lord and Savior, and I am his child. I am not walking in the flesh, but I'm walking in the spirit and openly confessing the greatness that he has put with inside of me. To our text, to our text in 1 John 4 and, and, and 6. He says, we are from God, are of God, and have, and we know that he hears us. I'm sorry, 1 John 4 and 6, not our text, I'm going down below it. We are of God, are from God, and we know he hears us. And he who is not of God does not hear us. He's saying there's a distinction between those who are listening to God and those who are not listening to God. We know that there is the spirit of truth versus the spirit of error. Uh, God is saying then that if one is walking, Jesus is saying, John is saying, I'm sorry, if one is walking in error or one is walking in deception and being led astray or, in, or, or not or wandering off, then they're not walking in the spirit of Christ. They're walking in the spirit of error. He says, I believe that, that, that God here now is giving us this spirit to keep us on track, to not sway away from the greatness that is in us. It's most important then to test that spirit, try the spirit to see whether it is of God or it's a man. If, 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 it is, if it is a faith, then our faith is in Christ. We're in a time where our faith needs to be tied to the spirit of Christ. We need to understand that we need to rule over the enemies then that are attacking us. That's being by the greatness that's inside of us. My faith must be rested in the knowing that Christ is in me and I have the power on the inside. I cannot be swayed away from that because I am locked in with them being of this confidence that I know that he loves me, that every battle or difficulty or circumstances that I'm going through, I have this peace which passes all understanding that rests inside of me. Peace at the ex to the extreme that I'm not looking at this peace saying that I'm not concerned about what's going on around me. Things are going on around me, but I still have peace. Things are going on around you, but I still have peace. That's the resting peace of the Holy Ghost. 
Here it is. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. John teaches this as not being self-assurance, but God assurance. God assurance is a wonderful thing. The old church used to sing the song, Blessed Assurance, that Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation and purchased by blood. Born of his spirit and washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. It is an assurance to knowing that Christ is inside of me. There is greatness in you. Watch this. In Romans 16 and verse 20. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Hang with me now. Watch his robe is stopped. This God of peace is telling you and me the greatness that's in you is because you're in me. Remember what we talked about in that? I in you and he in me and I am in him. That's the greatness. And this God of peace, which the peace of God gives me the God of peace, says I'm going to crush this thing under your feet shortly. He talks about this and God giving us this power when he gave him this power when he raised Christ from the dead. When he got him up out the grave, he gave him power of heaven and earth, of things in earth and things in heaven and things under the earth. He said it like this, all power was given unto him. And that greatness now is in you and I. Ephesians, Paul says, this is how, how he raised him in Ephesians 1, 21 to 22. He says, for above all principalities and powers. Now you have to lock your mind on that. And no matter what power is shaking the world today, Christ has been risen far above it. Stop for a moment and let me just bring you into this lesson and lift your hands up as high as you can and try to touch the ceiling in your house. Unless you're standing on something, you can't touch it. But even when you do that, open the ceiling up and touch the sky. Even when you go beyond the sky, Christ is a four above all that. Are you high enough yet? Whatever you're dealing with in life, Christ can raise you and me far above it. How high, Pastor House? I'm glad you asked me. He is sitting us right now in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What a peaceful place. Whenever you want to get to that place of just tranquility, just move away into the heavenlies with God and just rest in what he is doing. That's the greatness in you. Tell your worries. Just stay right here. I know you're not leaving just yet, but I'm going to go on into the throne room of God and rest in the peace of God. Principalities, powers, might, dominions, every name that is named, every name that is named. The name you've been hearing these days is COVID-19. My God, what a fearful thing. But there's greatness in the church. For above all these things, and I want you to see this, and it put all things under his feet. Where are you at, Pastor House? Ephesians 1, verse 21 and 22. And it's put all things under his feet and given him to be the head over all things. To the church. See it? A head and a body. The church, the body. Christ, the head. Everything is under his feet. If the head says it's under his feet, then the body's got to say, you got it. It's under my feet too. There is greatness in you, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all and all. Listen, he said it like this to Peter. You're going to learn revelation. First mentioned principles follow with consistency of revelation. So he tells Peter, I'm saying it again, first mentioned principles follows with consistency of the same. So he tells Peter in Matthew 16, up on this rock, I will build my church. First mentioned principle. I'm building, Peter, my church, and I'm going to keep building my church. I build them through what they go through, and the greatness in them comes out as I build them. And the gates of hell, my God, I'm not going to get through this tonight, shall not prevail against the church, will not overrun, will not dominate, will not diminish the church. The church goes and takes the gates from hell and tell hell, shut up. That's how powerful God has put greatness with inside of you. Say it again another way, Pastor. One of y'all can chase a thousand and two can put 10,000 demons to flight. That's the glory that resides within the church. Peter here is not the stone. He is a small portion of the stone. Christ is the rock on which this church is built. Matthew helps us out more with this greatness that's within the church or within you. In the seventh chapter, he says, verse 24, rains came, floods came, and wind came and beat upon this house. 
He said, but it withstood the pressure. That's right. It withstood the pressure because it was founded on a rock. You're wondering, how am I making it in this season? Because what you built on was built to last. You're not some shabby, huffing, bluffing, big bad wolf falling over house. You are the house of the living God. You have greatness inside of you, but I'll never know it unless the floods come, unless the rain comes, unless the wind blow, and you're still standing. Go ahead, tell yourself, I'm still here. Out of all that I'm dealing with and all that's shaking my world, I am still here, still here. You withstood the pressure and you were founded upon the rock. This spiritual warfare and spiritual authority comes to the believer as the authority base in Christ Jesus. This conflict and opposition that might come against you and the pressure that might hit you, yet you have peace with God. I have peace with God and I have the God of peace that's on my side. The emotional stimulation here is not in my intelligent thinking. I'm looking at, looking at the crushing and the blows that the enemy are throwing, but the victory come when I refuse to allow myself to look at the natural, but more so look at the spiritual. I trust God and his promises more than I do looking at the natural. I'm going to have to slow down tonight and pick this up next week, but you have to look at this thing through a spiritual eyes. And you can see it in 2 Kings, the 6th chapter and verse 16 through 17. King here of Assyria, king of Assyria is coming down to fight against God's people. He's come to make war. He didn't realize who he was fighting. You can transpose this as you will. See, the enemy wants to fight you, but he don't really realize who he's fighting. When he brought the fight, the greatness came forth for God's people. Elijah said to the young servant that was with him, he says, do not fear. First thing you must do to recognize the greatness in you, do not operate from fear. He says, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes. That's my prayer tonight, that in all this that we're going through, that God just fling your eyes open to see the greatness that's in you. Open his eyes in accessory prayer. The Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, watch it, the mountains were filled with horses and the chariots of fire around Elisha. It's God's man, God's woman, it's you that he surrounds. Enemy ain't attacking where there ain't no greatness. He's trying to find a fight that he can't win, but not knowing when he comes to fight you, he ain't fighting you. He's in fighting, he's fighting the person that's inside of you and that greatness he can't get through. And the more he breaks you or tries to damage you, the more the greatness shines out. Mountains are surrounding Elisha and the enemy was blinded and he was defeated because God was on Elijah's side. God's got you covered. Talk back to me tonight. I got to close this, but just tell myself, God's got me covered. You mean to tell me, Pastor House, that if there's so much greatness in me, then why are these bills behind? And why I'm looking at trying to get the next check? And why am I feeling kind of worried about are we going to open or not open? Why is the concern about it's going to open, but it might get worse before it gets better? Because you survived the first wave, you will survive the second wave also. Because the greatness that's inside of you, mountains were surrounding people, chariots of fire surrounding the mountain. Elijah was there looking at the young man and said, I told you, God's got you covered. On the couch where you're at, when you're sitting in the room, you can't really get close to anybody, but point at him and tell him, I told you, God's got you covered. No matter where you're at, God is looking out for you. Here it is, and I want you to grab this tonight as I come to a slow pause. In Psalms 34 and verse 7, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. Do you see the surrounding of God? in a camp meeting and you in the midst of it. The enemy's got to get past the angelical host of the Lord before he's going to touch you. And before that, he's got to get past God. He's encamping around about you. He delivers those who trust in the Lord. Isn't that a blessing? He's there to deliver you. That's the greatness that's in you. Can I go a little bit further? Thank you. He says now in verse 8, Oh, taste and see. It will shout. Some of you never experience the surrounding blessings of the Lord. But he can get around everything that's trying to surround you and says, I got you covered and got your enemy on pause. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Psalms 35, 5 says the angels of the Lord will chase them 
down in the darkness and catch them in slippery places and will persecute them because they came up against God's people. I paraphrased it, Psalms 35, 5. But the angel of the Lord will chase them down. The greatness that's within you, God is releasing angels right now to chase down your enemies and bring them in slippery places and plunder them to destruction. See, there's something that's running away from you because it's got too close to you and God knew his hand is on you. And that thing is moving away from you right now because of the greatness that's on your life. Here's what we're trying to bring you to tonight and let you see clearly that there's authority in the mouth of the believer. God's hand is resting upon you. No matter what fear or worry or anxiety that's troubling you tonight, there is greatness inside of you. God bless you tonight. Come on back with me next week. i got so much more to tell you, but there is something moving in the church, stirring in the heart of the believer, waking up a battle, a fighter within you like you've never experienced before because there's greatness inside of you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. We love you tonight. Thank you for listening in. Hope I didn't cut it too short because it's just right on the tip of my tongue. If I go any further, I'm going to be another hour in this and you need to go back to whatever you were doing. But hey, I got you coming back next week. You that tuned in and enjoyed this watch party and was a part of this tonight. I'm so grateful that, that you're so able to tune in and be a part of this. And let's thank the Lord for allowing us to share the word that he speaks out of his word. He says that you, you, you have something that's inside of you. You are God's children. We are God's children. And there's a greater inside of you than that that's in the world. The world is pressuring, but he cannot break break the saints because God has put something built in us that's built to last and outlast the, the trauma and the attacks of the enemy. Don't worry about those doubts and fear and, and all that stuff. Focus back on the Lord and put your attention on the things that concerned the Lord's victory in your life and not the worry and the doubt and disbelief. All those things are ploys and tricks of the enemy. Don't let them overrun your life. Pray right now. Father, bless you for this word that we have received tonight. I pray that something we have said that we can understand error from truth and we know that you are the greater one inside of us and you have destroyed the works of the enemy, rendered him pow powerless. You have been risen for above all principalities and powers. Therefore, you reside in us and you we are the body, you are the head. We believe that where you are, that's where we are. And what you're going to do, that's what we're going to do. We're going to overcome by our victory and the blood of the Lamb in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it right now. Amen and amen and amen.